Not a lot of people really remember just how big the indie scene was circa 2012. Games are still massively popular today, obviously, but the Let's Player scene resulted in a veritable explosion of indie games during the time. There was one game in particular that came and went like a flash of light, something which really showed me the power games have to evoke an experience or an emotion. A simple game about exercise which would live rent-free in the back of my head for years. The name of this game was Super Squat Simulator. This is Josh Wilson from the Eagle One development team, and I'm here to tell you how we made the best exercise game mode in Sandbox. Terry Squat Simulator started as an experiment in December of 2020. Eagle One hadn't really put out a project in a while, and I was kind of looking to relax with something simple and easy to put together. Super Squat Simulator was one of those experiences that I had remembered from when I was a kid. There was just something about the way a simple joke about doing a mundane exercise turning into this epic display of athletic prowess that really just spoke to me on a fundamental level. So I had decided to essentially recreate this game in 3D. It was extremely simple at first. I went into Blender and created some basic animations of Terry squatting up and squatting down. From there, it was an incredibly simple process to set up a simple camera that would play the animations when I press the up and down keys. It was around then that I had decided to reach out to Mungus about making music for the game. He had gained some notoriety within the sandbox community with a single he had released earlier that year about the game. I thought it would be very funny on a meta level to have him create music for the game. By this point, I had already decided to pivot the game into effectively being a parody of an 80s exercise montage, so the tone and genre and music were very simple and easy to follow. One of the first things I worked on next was a post-processing shader to make the screen look sort of like an old VHS tape. With the help of Dr. Gurk from the team, I managed to get this up and running. It was a fairly simple shader to set up, and it primarily works by offsetting the red and green channels slightly in the left and right directions and then blurring them slightly. After that, I spent some time setting up a sort of basic intro for the game and got the first iteration of the music in. It was rough, but it worked and I was very excited. I wanted the game to stick out in some ways and be an improvement from the game that inspired it. And as you can imagine, that was quite the challenge, which I chose to approach in three ways. First, I decided to animate and create other exercises that included different minigames. These were a lot of fun to come up with and allowed me to effectively have a simple form of progression through the game. These included running, punching, squatting, and yoga positions. The second thing I did was add power-ups, which could be spawned via Twitch commands. These would include things like burgers that subtracted points, or sandwiches which would give points. Eventually, towards the end of the project, I had a whole list of commands which would appear on the screen with the name of the caller. This effectively created a sort of chat versus streamer scenario which added a whole other layer to the game for those who streamed to an audience. The third and final thing I added towards the end of the project was an ending to the game. One thing that I tend to find really funny is when the results of something mundane you do results in an overly dramatic or epic conclusion. We went through so many variations of this, but ultimately settled on the cosmic speech you see in the game today. I wanted something emotional and just a bit sad. Something that would make you look back on your journey and almost feel nostalgic. It was actually Mungus's idea to have a final speech in the game and Jacob's to write an end credit song. All of this in combination with the beautiful scenery of the map really helped to make the ending feel bigger, grander, and more important than it otherwise would have been. Kabubu was actually kind enough to create a model of a buff Terry for this game, which sort of adds an extra comedic contrast. It was at this point that I had reached out to both Shimona and Gmo Man on the team to help create a map for the game mode. With the help of our assets and some additional models provided by Kabubu, Gmo Man put together an excellent base of a gym evoking 80s and 90s workout videos. Gmo Man gave particular attention to the Vista scene at the end of the game. Shimona came along and of course helped finalize the design and art pass for the map, and the results worked absolutely perfectly for the game. One of the last things we finalized was the music. We had the tracks in development basically since the beginning, but really ramped up work towards the end of the project. Doddle on our team was absolutely instrumental in helping mix, organize, and helping to integrate the tracks into the game. In addition to this, he composed and performed an absolutely killer guitar solo for the later part of the game. It legitimately elevates the soundtrack to a ridiculous degree and helps sell the comedy of the game. Finally, as we neared the end of the project, it was nothing but trying to polish the game to a mirror shine. I fixed bugs, implemented the intro, which has cameos from our concept artist Ethan, and the enigmatic sandbox newsman Gavardos. 
Once everything was in place and everything had been tested, I released the game. Overall, the project was a ton of fun to work on, and I was more than happy with the reception. The comedy really seemed to hit, and Gavardus' stream of the project was a ton of fun. I learned a ton as usual, and couldn't have done it without the talented members of this team. Until next time, thanks for watching. Feel free to join our Discord or follow us on Twitter, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will see you next time.